Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning. And we give a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield, Clark County area, or looking for a new church home, we invite you to make St. John your new church home. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship in the order of confession and forgiveness on page 94 in the front of your worship book. And I invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stay. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We're happy to have you visit with us on the YouTube. We'd be even happier if you could come in person to St. John's Lutheran. Today is uh, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, August the 9th, 2015. Our theme is Christ is the Bread of Life. This first hymn, We're Marching to Zion, was written by Isaac Watts, my favorite writer of hymns. Wrote very early, wonderful hymns wonderful word picture of Christians marching to the hill of Zion, marching to heaven. And this hymn was sung when German planes were bombing England. This hymn was a great inspiration for the English to hold out against all odds. And this man, Isaac Watts, learned Latin when he was only five years old. Brilliant, genius, and wrote many, many hymns. Transformed hymns that we have many of his today. Listen to the words, marching to Zion.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Singleton is reading God's Word. He sang a new praise canticle today. The first reading is from 1 Kings 19, chapter, verses 4 through 8. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones in a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights, to harm the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is Psalm 34, emphasizing Christ is the bread of life, and singing responsively.
to the first and fifth chapter, second verse. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work modestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath, and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're singing the gospel acclamation. Our pastor is Pastor John Pollock. He will now be reading the gospel. The gospel follows the theme, Christ is the bread of life, come down from heaven. When we eat this bread and we drink this cup, Christ gives us his presence forever and eternal life. Pastor John Pollock.
We're now looking at the woman at the well, the first evangelist who started the first church. Jesus preached to her, and he declared that he was the Messiah. This hymn, Just As I Am, was written by Charlotte Elliott, one of my favorite hymns. Charlotte Elliott, when she was a young person, was sour, bitter, bitter, and resentful, but she softened and she found God, and she wrote this hymn, Just As I Am, written in 1836. Charlotte lived to be 82 and wrote about 150 hymns. She always had poor health, but she was able to resolve it through this hymn, Just As I Am, Just As We Are, God Receives Us How We Are, 836, Just As I Am, beautiful hymn, Charlotte Elliott, 1836, lived in Brighton, England.
even though you will have a roommate and live in a dorm, you can still have that feeling of loneliness because you were separated from family and friends. And you can even be in a retirement home, surrounded by fellow senior citizens, but feel lonely because no one ever calls, no one ever visits. So being alone, it is something that we all go through. But in our Old Testament lesson for today, we see an example of how, or learn a lesson of how never to be lonely again. Our Old Testament lesson involves the familiar and famous prophet Elijah. Elijah was a prophet in the northern kingdom of Israel. You may recall that after the death of Solomon, Rehoboam, his son, came to the throne. And the people from the north, what would be the northern kingdom, the ten tribes, they came to Rehoboam and they said, your dad ruled us with a heavy yoke and he scourged us with whips. If you will lighten the burden upon us, if you will make things easier, we will be loyal to you. So Rehoboam told the ten tribes, come back in three days and I will give you an answer. So the first thing Rehoboam did was go to the elders who had advised his father Solomon. And he said, the people have come to me, they're complaining about how hard it was under my dad. They want to know what I will do. And the elders told him, look, the temple is built. The city has been fortified. The fortifications throughout the empire. Your dad has done everything that needed to be done. So lighten the burden on the people, lighten the taxes, and do not be oppressive to them. So then Rehoboam goes to his buddies, those he grew up with, those who now are friends of the king, those who now feel like they're powerful, and many of them are arrogant because of being buddies of the new king. And when he asked them for advice, they said, put a heavier yoke upon them, and where your father scourged them with whips, you scourge them with sport. So three days later, the people returned and asked for Rehoboam's answer, and he gave them that answer. My father put upon you a heavy burden, but I will put a heavier one upon you. My father scourged you with whips, and I will scourge you with scorpions. And the ten tribes of what became the northern kingdom said, What do we have with David? He is not our relative. David, take care of yourself. We will take care of ourselves. And the kingdom split into the northern and southern kingdom. By the time of our reading today, Ahab is the king of Israel. When you read the beginning of Ahab's ascension to the throne, it said he is far worse than any king so far in the northern kingdom. He encourages the Israelites to abandon the true God and follow the pagan gods of his wicked pagan queen, Jezebel. Jezebel has killed many of the prophets of the Lord. A hundred of them escaped, and a servant of Ahab's hid them in fifties in two different caves and provides food and water for them. Because of Ahab's actions, Elijah confronts Ahab and tells him, until he repents, God will cause a great famine on the land of Israel. There will be neither dew nor rain until he repents. Of course, Ahab calls Elijah a troubler, a troublemaker, wants him killed, so Elijah withdraws. For three years, the famine has been raging. It has become so bad that Ahab gives a command to his servants to take and search throughout the kingdom and see if they can find any water with any grass so horses and mules can eat so they will not die. And then the word of the Lord comes to, Ahab, to Elijah again and tells him to go and confront Ahab. So Elijah comes to Ahab. And he tells Ahab to gather all the people of Israel on Mount Carmel. And he said, we will decide once and for all who will be the God of Israel. Baal or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm sure you're familiar, well familiar with the story that the people of Israel gather on, on Mount Carmel. The 450 prophets of Baal gather. Elijah is there. Two bulls are brought forward. The prophets of Baal go first. They slaughter their bull. Slice it up, put it on the altar, and then pray for Baal to send fire down to consume. 
consume the offering. And this is a contest. Whoever God sends fire down to consume the offering will be the God they worship. So this is morning. And the prophets of Baal began to pray to Baal to come and consume the offering. And nothing happens. And it comes noon. They begin yelling louder and screaming. Elijah begins to talk them. Maybe you need to yell a little louder. Maybe Baal's taking a nap. Or maybe he's gone on a journey and came here. Maybe he's relieving himself. All kinds of insulting things he says about Baal. And still nothing happens. Until it's mid-afternoon and Elijah says, that's it, it's my turn. So he has the bull cut up, put on an altar. Then three times he has him dump four buckets of water on that altar and he has him dig a trench around it so the excess of water flows into that trench. So now you have an offering that is totally soaked, the wood is totally soaked, the stones are wet, and the trench is filled with water. And Elijah looks up to God. He said, oh God, the father of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove that you are the true God, the one God. And with that, Fire comes down from heaven and it not only consumes the bull, it consumes the wood, the rocks, and all the water in the trench. And Elijah says for them to seize the prophets of Baal, all 450, and then kill them. And the people proclaim allegiance to the true God. Afterwards, rain falls, the famine ends. Jezebel finds out what happens and swears she will kill Elijah. Elijah feels like he's alone, that he's the only one to defend God, and so he flees. He goes through the northern kingdom of Israel, down to the southern kingdom of Judah, out of the way to the bottom of Judah, into the wilderness on the way to Mount Sinai, where centuries before the Hebrew children had gathered to receive the Ten Commandments from God through Moses. And Elijah finds a broom tree and he lies down under it and he prays that God will take his life because he's done all he can. He's alone. He feels like he's a failure. He sleeps for a while and an angel taps him on the shoulder, wakes him up, and he says, get up and eat. And there's a cake prepared for him in a jar of water. He eats and drinks and falls back to sleep. The second time the angel comes. And this is where we learn our lesson for today, focusing on verse 7. As we look at verse 7, we read, And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. The Hebrew word we translate as journey is a Hebrew word that literally means the course of a life. So basically what the angel is saying to Elijah is get up and eat what God has provided you because your course of life is too great for you to handle on your own. And so that is the first important lesson that we learn from this text today that in being lonely we do not have to be lonely if we realize that we cannot face life on our own. That we are not self-made people. We are people made by God. We are people created to be in relationship with God. We are people who have been created to be in relationship with each other. And what the angel is showing us by his action is that if you think you can face the course of life on your own, you are going to be terribly disappointed. For when those storms come, when those trials and tragedies and tribulations come, when those crises come, when those emergencies happen, Without God, then you are alone. In God, having the angel provide for Elijah, we see a foreshadowing of God sending us, our Lord Jesus Christ. In this event with Elijah, we see a foreshadowing that God would send his only son into the world in order to be our companion every day, every week, every month, and every day. We see a foreshadowing that God would send His only Son to be with us always so that we never have to feel alone. That we never have to feel abandoned. But knowing that Jesus is always with us. In this the angel feeding, waking Elijah, feeding him, and telling him he needs to feast on what God has given him, we 
see a foreshadowing also that through Jesus Christ, we sustain ourselves by his feasting on his word and on his body and blood and the Lord's Son. By feasting on his word, by partaking of the Lord's Supper, Jesus assures us that we are not alone, but that he is always with us. A Native American tribe had a unique practice for training young braves. On the night of the young brave's 13th birthday, they would blindfold him and take him on a walk far away from the village. When he undid his blindfold, he would discover that he was in the midst of a dense forest. And the command was he had to stay in that forest all night by himself. Every time a twig snapped, he probably visualized a wild animal ready to pass. Every time he heard a wild animal howling in the distance, he probably thought it was a wolf ready to leap out of the darkness. Every time he heard the wind blow, he probably thought the wind was just masking up a more sinister sound that was coming in. And then after what seemed like an eternity, the first rays of morning light would pierce through that forest. And the brave would look around and he would see flowers. He would see trees. And he would see the path that undoubtedly he had walked on that day and led him down that night to the spot where he was. And then as he looked around just a few feet from him, he saw the figure of a man. A man armed with a bow and arrow and anything else he needed to defend that young man from any wild animal or from a brave from another tribe trying to kidnap him. And as the light came even brighter, it did reveal that that man was his own father. That throughout the entire night, his daddy had been there keeping watch over him so that he was never in danger. Likewise, God in Jesus Christ is always present with us, no matter the situation. His presence is unseen, but it is as real as life itself. Elijah thought that he was alone to face Jezebel all by himself. But the angel of God came to him, feeding him and assuring him that God's presence was there and that he could continue his course of life until God would take him home. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, we are never alone. Even in the midst of the most violent thunderstorm, Jesus Christ is with us. Not only is Jesus Christ with us, but he gives us food to nourish us and strengthen us as we continue our course of life. The food he gives us, as I've mentioned already, is his word and his body and blood in the Lord's Supper. As Jesus says in our gospel lesson for today in that sixth chapter of John, in verse 35, he said, quote, I am the bread of life. And then again, in verse 51, he said, quote, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. In the world. This is why going to church is so important. Important so that with the community of faith, you can feed on God's word and you can feast on the body and blood of Jesus Christ, assuring you of the forgiveness of sin and the promise of everlasting life. Now I know that there are those people who, when you bring up church, will tell you, well, I can read the Bible at home. Or they'll tell you, well, I can get a hymnal from home, and I can read the prayer services each day and each night. On Sunday, I can read the liturgy that you use in church. But the question is, will you? The question is, will you take the time to actually do it? Without gathering in the community of faith regularly, it is too easy to become so overwhelmed by all the temptations and busyness of life 
that he did not take the time or have no time to stop and feast on God's word on your own. And so it is important that you gather within the community of faith to hear God's word and to feast on his son. Because without gathering together in the community of faith, there is no distribution of the Lord's son. Contrary to what some of your TV preachers may say, when they are celebrating communion in their churches and they tell you to go run to the refrigerator and get some grape juice and a piece of bread and take communion with them, that's not communion. You know, that service was taped a week or two before, and the Holy Spirit is not frozen or videotaped. He's active in the light. And usually these type of churches that tell you to do that don't even use the words of institution. Well, without the words of institution said over the bread and wine, you're just eating bread and drinking wine. But when you gather in community, and the words of institution are proclaimed over the bread and wine, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, the body and blood of Jesus Christ become present, and we feast on him just as he told us to do. Just like that young Native American boy was never alone during his stay in the forest, you are never alone. And when you are afraid, just like that little boy during that battle, thunderstorm, remember that Jesus Christ is always with you. For it is Jesus who before he ascended into heaven, made his promise to the apostles, made his promise to his church, made his promise to you. Quote, and behold, I am with you all to the close of the age. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now sing what a friend we have in Jesus, hymn number 742, in the back of your worship. Hymn this number hymn was written by Joseph Scriven, who was born in England. He immigrated to Canada. Joseph Scriven had a very unhappy life. He lost two fiancés. Nobody knew he could write great poetry in his later life. He shared it with some of his friends. And we get this hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Joseph Scriven's first fiancé died. He immigrated to Canada. He had another fiancé. She died. And when he was buried, he was buried feet to feet with his second fiancé so they could stand together and see God when they, at the resurrection. He was a famous minister in England and also he was a minister of the Plymouth Brethren at Pope, Port Hope, Canada. The hymn before just as I am is used as an altar call hymn in the Baptist Church and is used often with Holy Communion here in the Lutheran Church where we receive Holy Communion, receive the body and blood of Christ, we receive eternal life and salvation. We repent, we believe, we love God, we love another.
ask that you please turn to page 105 in the front of your worship book to the words of the Apostles' Creed. And again, I invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stand as with the whole church we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for our offering. Gus and Connie Singleton are the ushers during the offering. Give a few announcements. Today, it's too late, probably by the time you hear this, we're having our church picnic. St. John's Preschool has an open house Sunday, August 23rd from 2 to 4 p.m. Come and meet the teachers. This great preschool has been going on here for years. Begin, this preschool will begin on September the 7th. If you could donate anything, just call the church office. Kleenex, paper towels, napkins, small paper cups, sandwich bags, glue sticks, washable markers, copier paper, stickers, and monetary funds. The flowers today, given by Linda Fox, the glory of God. We always have fresh flowers here at our altar. They were artificial, gorgeous flowers. This is the glory of God, the praise of God. We're here to praise God. God finds our worship acceptable. We're studying today the Word. We will not have Holy Communion, but we have the Word of God. We receive salvation through the Word and sacrament. God loves us. Jesus loves us. He died on the cross. He gave His body. And as you read in the Scripture today, we receive His body, we receive eternal life, we receive salvation. He's with you till the end of life. The Flowers are also given by Connie and Gus Singleton in memory of Peter and Julia Micking, Gus and Dell Singleton. Today is August the 9th, 11th, Sunday after Pentecost. We invite you to come to our church, worship with us, we love you. Invite Jesus into your heart, become his servant, make him Lord of your life. Come and help us do good to others like the Good Samaritan. We love others, we love God, we love others. Those who came with that difficulty, please do. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our response today is, Lord, have mercy. For persecuted Christians here and throughout the world, that God would provide for their physical and spiritual needs, just as he provided for the prophet Elijah when he was fleeing from the persecution of Jezebel, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all those struggling with sin, that through the power of the Holy Spirit they may put off the old self and put on the new, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our daily bread, that God would richly provide all that we need to support our body and life through Jesus Christ, who is the true bread of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are struggling with faith and are plagued by doubt, that God would provide comfort, peace, and assurance to them in the light of Christ's death and resurrection. For their sake, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the bishops and pastors of Christ's church, who are worn out by the demands of the ministry, that God would grant them a renewed spirit and zeal, provide them with times of rest, and strengthen their faith and trust in Him. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For Christians everywhere, that we be given grace to build one another up in the joy of the gospel of the forgiveness of sins, that God will strengthen our relationships so that we would willingly forgive those who have sinned against us and receive forgiveness when we have sinned against them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the blessing of the Holy Eucharist, that God will grant all who faithfully partake in the sacrament the full blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation Christ offers us in his body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the hospitalized, and all of those dealing with long-term illness, that God will lay his healing hand upon them and fill them with his peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In your hand, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, comfort, and strengthen you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We conclude our worship of blood and fellowship, but enjoy the night. Hymn number 774 in the back of your worship. Hymn number 774. This hymn is also known as Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. It was written by Elisha Huffman. And he was a teacher, and he was writing it to comfort two of his students who had lost their wives. He put the words together, but he couldn't find the music that was appropriate. He contacted Anthony Showalter, writer of Christian hymns, and he provided the music. So, Elijah Hoffman, who was a teacher, Dalton, Georgia, it was written in 1887, good gospel hymn, he was a Presbyterian teacher, and then Elijah Hoffman was a famous hymn writer, and he wrote the music. So we can enjoy it, leaning on the everlasting arms.
thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Just uh, get on Google and type in YouTube, St. John's Lutheran Springfield, Ohio. Then you can use your cursor to find whichever service you want. Today's service, August the 9th. We're happy if you watch this service or any of our services. We'd happy if you could come here and help as we serve uh, 8,000 meals a month to the poor. About uh, 500 of those are hot meals. We have rainbow table. You can come work. You don't have to be a member of our church. Come work the rainbow table. Come help us to make quilts for the poor. Call our church office and volunteer your services because we're supposed to help God and love one another. We repent. We believe. We confessed our belief through the Apostles' Creed. We repented at the first of the service. We're following the Bible. We're a Bible-based church. Everything we do here is directly from the Bible. We just heard the Bible today, reading from John, where Jesus says, the true bread come down from heaven. And Jesus says, as he is in the synagogue, that if you receive the bread that he gives, bread of heaven, that you receive eternal life and salvation. He's with you to the end of time. That's a great promise. We believe that the bread that we have here becomes the bread of Christ. And that, because that's what he said. It's in John. Look at John. John, sixth chapter of God. John, you can read it. We believe that. And we, uh, we accept that as a wonderful gift. That Jesus, the bread from heaven comes down like manna. And even though it looks like bread, through the mystery of what Jesus promised us, he's promised us many things. And this is certainly a great thing, no greater than the Incarnation, no different from uh, His resurrection, it's a miracle, a mystery, and we receive His body and blood. He will not leave us orphans. He leaves His body and blood to give us strength for the fight, for the run, for our lives, until we meet Him face to face in heaven. Angels are here with us on earth. They're here with us around the altar. People who've died before us are here around the altar with us. Where two or three are gathered together, Jesus is here with us. This entire body, we're all together as one. Jesus is the head and we are the body of Christ. We thank you for coming. We thank you for watching. We're happy to bring you this service. Our church offers a Christian school program for ages 3 and 4, nursery and pre-K. For more information, you may call the church office 325-4311. Tune in again anytime. Thank you for joining our worship this Lord's Day. I hope and I pray that God will continue to bless and keep you this day and all your days. We will pray for you, continue to pray for us in our YouTube ministry. Again, thank you for watching. We'd love to have you, Wittenberg and Columbia. You can come here to our services, 8 o'clock, the drive-in, and on uh, Labor Day is the blessing of the pets, and the 1030 services in the sanctuary, and after Labor Day, everything returns to usual 8 o'clock service here, and the 1230, and the 1030 service in the sanctuary. We have Sunday school at 915, rally day is the Sunday after Labor Day. We welcome you to come, we have classes for all ages, nursery, through adults. We have two really good adult classes and we welcome you to come. One is on the end of time and the other is taught by uh, Pastor Pollock. So we welcome you to come Rally Day, which is the Sunday after uh, Labor Day. Come to the Gold Room and have Rally Day at 9.15 and then we'll meet your teachers, go to your classes.